Eldora Speedway in Ohio. In this second heat race, a false start causes everyone to slow. Every Leon Thixton, who rolled over in the air, hit Paul Huntington, then goes in for end. Thixton isn't injured. Huntington's injuries are minor. The attempt to restart that same heat isn't too successful either. That's Bobby Adkins jumping the cush, hitting the wall, and rolling over. But when they lined up for the feature, Adkins had the car repaired and on the pole. But the star of this show will be defending sprint champ Rick Hood. Hood in the Genesee beer wagon battled with number six Steve Butler early, but then Steve dropped out and Hood had a relatively easy race. But the flipping isn't over yet. Andy Staff spins in front of Hood. Bobby Kinzer's involved. Then Warren Mockler hit Kinzer enough to put Warren on his head, then into a ball of fire, but no injury. Hood, who himself flipped during a World of Outlaws show at Bloomington, Indiana last week, took command on the restart and watched in his rearview mirrors as Jack Hewitt and Tom Bigelow tried to decide second. Jack, who has finished third in this race the past three years, moves up a spot this year. You know, if you care, reproducing the spectacular flips in sprint car racing is not as automatic as it might seem at first glance, being careful not to glorify the wrecks in racing. Sprint car racing is excellent racing, but the high flying is indeed an accepted part of it. The World of Outlaws had quite a weekend at Knoxville, uh, fasten your seatbelt. Heat 2, Saturday night, Danny Smith and Guy Forbrook get too close and Forbrook has a memorable night. And Jim Grafton and Bruce Drott tangle with Drott going over. It's not over for Des Moines Grafton in the B main, it's his turn over. Then at the very next restart, hometowner Mike Brooks excavates some dirt. A couple of second generation drivers, Robbie Unser performed some sculpture work on the wall before Ricky Weld flamed out. And later when Bobby Davis Jr. and Dave Blaney hooked up, this is how Blaney ended up. Sammy, what's new Twindell, won. Kinzer and Swindell tagged each other before Sunday's feature flagged off. Of course, Steve to pit and he had to come from last to get six. The weekend's worst crash occurred two laps into this main event. Ron Schumann hit the wall, setting off an eight-car holocaust. Danny Smith crawled from beneath the biggest wreckage, and Dave Dwyer actually repaired this and finished the race. Sammy Swindell had to dispose of gambler man Brad Doty and hold off brother Jeff, but he won for the fourth time this year. The Pocono three-quarter mile oval had as Johnny Parsons in the white number 71. He'll lead the first four laps. Bob Ciccone in the red number 59 will lead the next five. But then the roadster of Drew Fanoro took command for the remaining 23 laps. As soon as Bobby's tires started getting hot, as soon as he got loose, he started going slower. You know, right at the end when his tires got pulled off pretty yellow, I figured I was in trouble. You know, but uh, it worked out okay. The win was worth three grand to Drew, whose brother Nick Jr. is still recuperating from injuries in a sprint car flip earlier this month. The World of Outlaws has announced that races will no longer be stopped for changing tires. Events, of course, will be halted for serious accidents or lengthy yellows, and teams can change tires during those reds. The All-Star Circuit of Champions sprint race at Williams Grove went to Jim Nance. He's the first double winner of the year at the Grove. He defeated Major Yanks and Johnny Mackison Jr. Now here's this week's trivia question. Women is the only crew chief to win a USAC sprint car race, Johnny Capel. He's involved with Rich Vogler's in the effort this year, and Rich, last week, his usual haunt, a sprint car. Whenever he attends an open wheel race, chances are pretty good he'll have a decent day. Our chief videographer, Greg Oldham, took a calculated risk, spent some extra time with Rich, and sure enough, turned out to be another winning day. Today's best, there, Noki Fanaro, back after his Eldora injuries. Sheldon Kinder, the very proficient Rick Hood, Warren Mockler, who rolled last week, Larry Rice, and Tom Bigelow, who flew up from Talladega, where he had practiced in his ARCA car. The track is ordinarily dry, so much so hot laps stop for watering. Then a ruddy track where Vogler had to survive this, tangled with Sheldon. Then along came Rick Hood, and it's a double dipper. No injuries and one more win for Rich. Another weekend USAC highlight, this Charlie Short slip. He came back to make the feature in this very same car. Meanwhile, Steve Kinzer won two all-star sprint features in the Midwest. The weekly sprint car winner's purse at Williams Grove is up to $2,400. Last weekend, veteran Steve Smith went to the bank for the first time since 1983. His son, Steve Jr., was fifth. Different kind of dirt. Last week should have been a sprint car championship, but the Strawberry King made it memorable. Saturday in Ohio, Eldora, the last all-star warm-up before Outlaw Sprint Speed Week. Second-generation Dave Blaney held off popular local Jack Hewitt, 
Earl and Bernice Baldus are celebrating their 32nd anniversary at Eldora, paid 3200 Trucking magnate J.W. Hunt, the Strawberry King, liked what he saw so much, he duplicated that toll to both first and second. The Speed Week opener, Finley, Ohio, Millstream Speedway, that old song was written near here, 74 sprint car shows. Heath claimed two, Pacific Northwestern Brent Kading is the one flying around Todd Kane, and later, local Joe Keegan cleared the cement. Bobby Allen started dead last in the feature. He passed everybody, including Hewitt and Wolfgang, and won, plus another 3,200 bonus from Hunt. Over five days from Iowa to Pennsylvania to Ohio, Allen had two seconds and two firsts. This series, including Friday and Saturday at Fremont Speedway and Eldora again, is highlighted by the legacy of fathers. About 15 of the three entries are sons or nephews of former Sprint drivers. The World of Outlaws ran last week at Knoxville. The last time they were here, Jimmy Grafton flipped twice during the program, and he makes it 3 for 3 at the start of heat number 4. In the semi, Scott Richard had an engine let go on the main straightaway that turned into a ball of fire. Scott escaped without injury. The main event saw one of the closest finishes in World of Outlaw history. Steve Kinzer, Bobby Allen, and Doug Wolfgang came out of turn number four, headed for the checkered. It appeared as if Allen might have nosed out Kinzer, but Steve is declared the winner. In Indy racing... ...happened. You know, Larry, the sprints and the midgets are probably the most volatile race car there is. Bob, wherever we travel, that's almost inevitably the first thing out of anybody's mouth that even happened in England this summer. They talk about the short track open wheelers in America and all the thrills that they provide. And the speed roam in Indianapolis provided some outstanding moments. This is Ken Nichols' crash down into turn number one. Now another angle. This is photographer Greg Oldham's shot. Look how close the car comes to our photographer. And he stays right in there, and Ken Nichols also not injured. Now, here's a situation where, obviously, discretion becomes the better part of valor when one driver finds that the other driver is larger than size once he's turning into the cockpit. Obviously, our Scott Park in suburban Los Angeles, California, Jardine, to be exact. Relatively gentle rollover. Not this, though. This is at Syracuse, New York, during a modified race. And another really hard hit coming up right here in turn number one. A car that helplessly is nailed head-on by another. No.